2024, if you want it to be the year of your breakthrough, you have to do this, right? You have to work towards it, okay? We have to put action. No more talking about it. No more typing about it. I love the New Year's resolutions, but the solution to making those resolutions come true is you staying committed to what you want for your life, right? In order to see your breakthrough come through, you have to keep breaking through the things that are trying to hold you back. In order to see your breakthrough come to, come to fruition, in order to experience your breakthrough, you have to keep breaking through those limiting beliefs, keep breaking through those obstacles, keep breaking through those people that want to hold you back, keep breaking through the past, keep breaking through the pain. You keep breaking through. That's why we call it a breakthrough. You're breaking through something. And for you, this year has been full of breakthroughs. And I think this year for you is the year that you experience all the work that you put in, that your prayers are being answered, right? That the life that you want to live is going to actually be experienced in your life. But I have to tell you this, in order to experience new things in your life, you have to make changes within your life. I know that seems very common sense, but I got to keep it real with you. I'm always keeping straight up with you. In order to experience new things in your life, what are new things? Maybe it's a financial breakthrough, right? Maybe it's a business. Maybe it's a dream. Maybe it's a relationship. I don't know what you need in your life. I'm not God, but I do know this. In order to experience something new, you have to create something new with inside of you. So I want each and every one of you to make a decision right now that you're going to commit to something new in this new year. It don't have to be a whole bunch of stuff. You don't have to write a list of things that you're trying to do. What's one thing that you can do to shift your life? Maybe it's going to the gym. Maybe it's not picking up the phone first thing in the morning. Maybe it's eating healthy. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's getting your prayer life Meditate. I don't know what it is for you, but pick one thing new that's going to create your breakthrough. One thing. Okay. Because a lot of us, we have this huge list of stuff that we want to change and we don't change a thing. Create one change in your life. Create one shift in your life. I want to say that off top, but this is my message for each and every one of you. Okay. Make sure you type amen. If you feel this, I will send you an instant message, a DM on how you can be a part of my VIP text community. I'll send you my number. Just send me amen. I will send you a DM. This is only for serious people that really want to be challenged. They really want to be changed. Okay? Because I know a lot of y'all, y'all text me stuff. And then you'll be like, why are you texting me? Because you text the number. <laughs> so if you really want change in your life, just type amen. I will send you an instant message. Okay? Also, I want to say this before I get started. New Year's Eve, I'm going to do a huge live. I'm going to give. It's going to be called. It's, it's really give back day. So at the end of every year. I give back on New Year's Eve. What does that mean? I'm giving back financially. So I'm going to do a live and I'm going to give back from $1,000 to $5,000, right? Like not every, not one person's getting that money, but I'm going to do a give back. Again, don't fall for fake profiles. I will announce it. It will be my voice. I will tell you on live if you want. So don't fall for all the giveaways. You won this and won that. That's New Year's Eve, okay? December 31st, I'll send you a text out. Make sure you're part of my text community. But this is the message I want to give for you. If you really want to make a change in 2024, this is an unpopular message that I was thinking about on my way over here. I want you to ask yourself this question right now. What are the ceilings in your life? And you guys share this right now. Let's get the energy up. I need to feel your energy. Okay. Let's like this. Let's like this. Let's share this. Get your energy up. Okay. I need to feel your energy. I can't see you, but I can see the emojis. I can see the chat. Get your energy up. Okay. I need your energy. Share this right now. Like this post. Let's make this go viral. Let's make this reach the lives that it needs to reach. This is a very important message. That's for free. And these things can shift your life. What up, Sylvia? Thanks for joining in. But I want you to think about this right now. Christina, I appreciate you. Paula, what up? What are the ceilings in your life? Okay? What are the ceilings in your life? And this is going to be, I'm going to tell you right now, so some of y'all can go ahead and leave. This is going to be an accountability message. This is not going to be an emotional, inspirational message that makes you feel good about keeping the things in your life that do no good for your life. It's not going to be a blame and complain message. This is going to be an accountability message. And I want the people on here that need to be on here, right? So if you, hey, I don't want to, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to take any accountability. This message is not for you. I can tell you right now. So you might as well press exit and leave. But if you're a person that says, like, I really want to make 2024 better, not just type it, not just post the quotes, and this is my gear, I'm focusing on me and everything, and I love it, by the way, but I know what's true. It's easy to talk it, it's hard to change it, because most people don't stay committed to their change. Most, most people don't stay consistent to their talk. So it's easy to write the quotes, and I love it. I love the intention. But after the intention, you got to make a decision to stay committed to the intention because intentions are great, but intentions don't do a damn thing if you don't stay loyal to those intentions. 
So for a lot of us, we're going to write all the things on Facebook in the next week. It's already started. This year is my year and it's about me. I'm focusing on me and all the things. If that's what you're going to do, great. I love it. But what's going to keep you committed to that? Let's be real. When it comes to June of 2024, are you still going to be committed to this year's about me? Are you still going to be committed to the change that you made on January 1st? I hope so. Because if you are, I can guarantee you the breakthrough that you want, you're going to experience. I can guarantee the breakthrough you're praying for, it's going to happen. But the truth is only 8% of people stay committed to stuff. That's the problem. So I love the intention of writing things down. I love the posts. I love the quotes. I love y'all sharing my stuff. But again, it has to be real for you. And it's only going to be real for you when you make it real for you by understanding what it's cost to you not to stay committed and loyal to the choices, to the, to the choices and the decisions and the intention that you're, that you're making. So this is the question I want to ask you. And I want to give you this masterclass for free on Facebook right now. And if you get clear on this, I believe some shifts will happen in your life. What are the ceilings in your life? Now, I'm going to slow down here because I want you to hear this. Amanda, talk that talk, but can't walk the walk. Exactly. Wake up and do the uncomfortable things. I love it, Emily. My chain started weeks ago. I love it. What are the ceilings in your life? I want to talk about this. And I believe as a parent, I believe just as a human being. Thank you, Lisa, for the stars. I appreciate you. This is very important. A lot of us, we have ceilings in our life that are, oh man. And when I start saying, oh man, that means I know this is going to connect with somebody. I don't know who you are, but this one's for you. A lot of us, we have ceilings in our life that keep us comfortable. We have ceilings in our life that keep us comfortable. And those comfortable ceilings prevent us from experiencing the next level of our life. For example, some of you might have a ceiling of dependency. You're dependent on mommy or daddy. You're dependent on this person to do this for you. You're, you're dependent on this person helping you. You know, I tell this with my kids all the time. I had a conversation with a teenager, actually a kid that was 20 some years old. And I said, you need to stop depending on mommy and daddy because you're comfortable depending on mommy and daddy. That's your ceiling because you know mommy and daddy is gonna always come through for you. You're afraid to go through the process of struggling. You're afraid to go through the process of figuring it out. Mommy and daddy is your ceiling because they're enabling you. And, and protect your peace in the book, you're gonna read about this, that one of the worst things that you can do for a person is enable them. It's having them depend on you for everything in their life. As a kid, I understand it. But when you become a grown adult, a lot of us, we have ceilings that are keeping us comfortable. We have ceilings of dependency, that we're dependent on people in things and situations that are keeping us complacent with the life that we're currently living. I'll give you a quick story on what changed my life. And I want to share this with you. I'm going to be totally transparent. In 2011, 2010, I went through the hardest season of my life. Not because I lost sports, because I was broke. Broke. Yes, an NFL football player, I was on the bench. Practice squad, I didn't have the money like that. I had some decent money, but I was broke. I was broke. I had $200 to my name, and I had a, a young son, Tristan, that was one year old at the time to take care of. I was broke. So when I say I know how it feels to be at rock bottom, I know how it feels. But I had parents that, that could afford to help me. I had a choice in that moment. I could go to mommy and daddy, which sometimes is necessary, y'all. I'm not telling you to struggle and don't get help from people. But I had a choice in that moment. I could go to mommy and daddy and say, hey, I need your help. Or I could take the uncomfortable path and figuring it out. And you know what happened? I'm going to tell you what created my financial breakthrough to, got me, to get me to the point where I, where I am today. Is I didn't call on mommy and daddy because I knew that would be my ceiling. I knew I could always pick up the phone and say, mom and dad help me, even when I wasn't fully helping myself. Right now, I get it. If you're fully helping yourself, you're doing all that you can and you're trying to get help from other people. I understand that. But for me, I wasn't fully helping myself at that time. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to experience this next 90 days of me giving my all to my life. I'm going to get very uncomfortable. I'm going to do some things like get a job that I don't want to get. 
I'm going to get two jobs. I'm going to do some things that are very uncomfortable because I don't want to create a ceiling for the rest of my life to depend on my parents. Right? They raised me. They did their job. Now it's my time to figure it out. And what happened was I figured it out. I struggled for a bit, but I figured it out because I took responsibility over my life and I said, it's on me. It's not on mom and dad. It's not on my friends to help me out. It's on me. This is my life. And I trusted myself. I trusted God that I could figure it out. So what did I do? I destroyed all the ceilings in my life. I identified who's a ceiling. Who am I dependent on that I, I appreciate them? But if I keep depending on them, they're actually limiting me from being who I can be. And some of us, we have those people in our life. They're not bad people. They're amazing people. I love my mom and dad. But I said, if I keep depending on them, do you know what's going to happen? Then they are going to be my ceiling for the rest of my life. And I'm never going to reach my full potential. You finished? Already? Yeah. How quick was that? It's because my teeth were really clean. Dang, that was pretty. That was the quickest clean I've ever seen. You sure? It's, Dang, it's like 20 minutes. Yeah. Well, congratulations. <laughs> I thought we had more time here. But what I want you to do, Tristan just got to clean. It took him like 15 minutes. I'm like, dang, you got some good teeth. <laughs> but I don't want y'all to get this message misconstrued. I'm not telling you to don't ask for help if you really, really need it. What I'm telling you is there's some ceilings in your life. It's always financial, but there's some ceilings in your life that have to be destroyed if you want to get to your next level. All right? The ceiling can be, you know, always running to somebody when times get hard. When you're emotionally like, you always run into a person. Maybe that person's a good person. Maybe that person's a bad person. But they're a ceiling in your life, right? Maybe you're the person that is always calling a friend, putting your problems on them. And they're good people, so they always listen to your problems. But what if you couldn't call them? And I'm not telling you don't ask for help. Like, don't take this out of context. But what if you got to a point where it's like, you know what? I'm going to figure this out. I know what to do. I know what's right. Right, I, I know what to do, and I'm gonna figure this out. I'm not gonna allow this person to be a ceiling no more by making me feel okay for staying in the same things that I'm really not okay with. So I truly believe, and I know it's not the message that everybody wanted to hear, but I believe that this is a message that could shift your life. Like, I really believe it. Identify the ceilings in your life today and say, you know what? This is no longer gonna be a ceiling in my life anymore. And I can tell you, like where I'm at financially is all because I didn't depend on mommy and daddy to do for me what I knew I was capable of doing it for myself. I figured it out. I worked two jobs. I saved the money. I live below my means. I still do. You know, I worked uncomfortable jobs that I was embarrassed to work at the time because I'm this public figure in my city that, dang, you work here? Like, what you working here for? Which people said, but I was okay with it. I humbled myself to say, you know what? This is not about impressing people because some of your ceilings is about impressing. Mm, there we go. Some of your ceilings is about impressing people. Some of you got that ceiling of trying to please everybody else. That's your ceiling. You worried about what him and her going to say about you. So you want to act like you somewhere where you're not. You want to act like you're financially good when you're not because you're afraid what they going to say about you. That's a ceiling. That's preventing you from actually meeting your potential that's inside of you, that you're capable of being. So what if you destroyed that ceiling and say, you know what? This is the year where I'm really not gonna give a damn about what people say about me. If I gotta work at McDonald's, cool. That's what I gotta do in order to make some extra cash. You know what I mean? If I gotta leave this situation, cool. That's what I gotta do. But this is the year where I let go of my pride and ego and I stop worried about what everybody else thinks. I burn that ceiling, destroy that ceiling, and I walk into what's true for me. And I say, you know what? This is the work that I need to do. Like, I've said this plenty of times, and I want to remind you. The best way to be bankrupt, financially, emotionally, spiritually, is to live a life of impressing other people. Best way to do it. That's a ceiling that some a lot of people in this world have. They want to look like it to impress other people. They want to show it to impress other people. A good friend of mine told me this, and I want to share with y'all. He said, Trent, what you buy 
doesn't show how much money you have. It shows how much money you spent. <laughs> and I said, that makes sense. So when I let go and burn that ceiling of impressing people, and I really did focus on my life and focus on my future and focus on my kids and family and focus on my business and put back into my business to grow my business and to do all the things and invest in myself instead of investing in pleasing people, it changed everything for me. So for some of you, Michelle, drop the fire emoji. I appreciate you, Michelle. Man, these people are ruthless with this reward stuff. Golly. Y'all need to go bother somebody else. Don't I fall for any reward stuff, y'all. That's not me. That's some fake pages. That's I don't know why Facebook allows these people to be on here. But I just wanted to come here and tap in and just share that thought with y'all. Like, write down one ceiling that you can destroy that will automatically elevate your life. Just write it down and say, you know what? I'm going to destroy this ceiling and I'm going to figure it out. Because if you don't, what happens, and I've seen this personally, I've seen it, that you're going to live the rest of your life never meeting the person that you are capable of becoming. As I always say, that stranger is going to stay, I mean, that greatest you is going to stay a stranger in your life. A lot of us, were afraid to go through the hard times. And I know some of us, we go through hard times all the time. But a lot of us were afraid to downgrade. A lot of us were afraid to scale back. A lot of us were afraid to say, you know what? This year, I'm not going to go out to impress my friends. or I'm not going to buy the things that I know I can't afford to impress people. Like, I'm going to really live below my means so I can really elevate my life. I really feel if you get clear on your ceiling that's been preventing you from being the best you, and you destroy that ceiling, I believe that you're a rocket. You will shoot up into more confidence. You will shoot up into more life, more abundance, more breakthroughs. But you gotta be willing to say, I gotta let go of this. And it isn't about removing yourself from people. Like again, I love my parents. I love my dad. But at the same time in 20, 2011, I had a choice. I could have called them and said, hey, I need this. They would have gave it to me, for sure. But instead of calling them, I said, you know what? Let's figure this out. Let's, 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 let me figure out all my capabilities. Let me, let me exhaust everything I have and see where I end up at. Some of you haven't done that. You haven't exhausted everything you have. You haven't even tapped into your gifts and your talents. And everything I tapped into built the person that y'all see today. Me training kids and football players and me speaking and me doing all the things, it built who y'all see today. And I would never be who I am if I wouldn't destroy that ceiling in my life. So think about that when you go into your 2024. I know it's not a sexy message. I know it's not This is your year and everything's gonna come to your life. And I know that's sexy and I know it's motivating and inspirational. But if you really wanna experience change, this is what I know is true. Motivation, inspiration isn't enough. Nothing's gonna come to your life by doing the same things you've been doing. It's just true, right? You gotta, you gotta literally break away from some things that you've been dependent on that's really been holding you back. That's really been your prison. That's really been keeping you from being who you are capable of being. Like, think about that. If you're not who you know you can be, it's because you have ceilings in your life that are limiting you. That's it. That's it. Something that is keeping you from giving all of you to, to this world, you know, to your gift, to your talent. I truly believe if you give all of you to whatever it is, I believe it's hard not to be successful at it. I believe it's hard not to change. I believe it's hard not to grow. And I know when you grow and when you change, it changes this. And I believe, as I always say, your perspective, it strengthens it, right? When you go through that perspective field that I talk so much about, it becomes your power. And when your perspective is your power, then it's over. It's over because everything that comes at you, you're using it to build you. It's over. But a lot of us, we have a poor perspective because we have so many ceilings in our life. So 
before you go back to the thing to depend on that, try to figure it out. You're smart enough. You're capable enough. And it will pay off. It might not pay off this year. It might not pay off next year. It might not pay off in 2028. But at some point, you're going to look back and be thankful that you destroyed that ceiling so you can reach higher heights. 2011, that was me. All right? But like I said in every single video, it all starts with you. I thought we had more time in here, but his tid cleaning took two minutes. <laughs> So, Yvonne, thank you. Wow, that's right. That's my power. Yeah, Shayla, my problem is caring what people think, and I'm trying to fix already broken just because of my family. So, Kara, Sierra, this is what I would tell you. I know a lot of you struggle with caring what people think. You're human, right? We all do it at some point. What helped me is realizing this truth, and I'll just keep it real with you. What people think ha cannot stop you or control you, right? There's people who think that Trent Shelton is a loser. There's people who think that Trent Shelton sucks, I'm sure. There's people who don't like me. I know that for a fact. What they think is what they think. It's okay. What they think doesn't control my actions. What they think doesn't control how I feel about myself. What they think doesn't control how I show up. I'm not concerned about those that have an opinion about me that doesn't serve me because that's something I can't control. I'm not going to use my energy to try to change somebody's opinion about me. Now, their opinion changed because they experienced my heart. They experienced a live where they got to see me serving like this and they changed their opinion, great. But I'm not gonna shift my energy to make somebody, to live my life trying to change something that might not ever be changed. I realize that people's opinions and what people think of me doesn't pay my bills. It doesn't do anything for my family. It doesn't change my life, it doesn't help my business. It doesn't do anything. So I realized, okay, what they think is what they think, so I stopped taking it personal. And that's the thing. A lot of you are taking what people think, even as people around you that you know your family. You're taking it personal. You're allowing their experience of life and how they experience you determine how you live your life. And when you get to the point of not caring enough about what people think, it will change your life. That's a ceiling for a lot of you. You care about what people think too much. And I get it. As a human being, we want... We, we don't like words. We don't like harsh words. But when you really dive into like really being focused on you and changing you, you realize that you hold the responsibility to change your life, nobody else. That's when things shift and change for you because you will never control somebody's words about you. I can't control somebody coming on this live right now and say, Trent, you're an idiot. I can't control that. But you know what? If I see that, it just shows me more it shows me that they're dealing with something that has nothing to do with me because I know my heart, right? I know I haven't hurt anybody. I know I haven't like tried to tear somebody down. That's not my character. So I refuse to let an opinion change the way I view my own character. And that's the problem. Some of you are putting too much weight into people's opinions about you. It's an opinion. That's it. It's an idea that they have of you. Their idea doesn't have to be your truth. Their idea isn't going to pay your bills. The idea shouldn't change how you feel about you. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of us, we're too focused on what people think. We're too focused on pleasing everybody. We're too focused on making everybody else happy. The shift happened for me when I said, I am no longer trying to make people happy. I'm just trying to do what's right in my life and make myself happy in doing so. If God says, Trent, you're not doing the right thing, God will deal with me. But I hope in my heart that I am doing what God has called me to do. I truly believe I am in my way that God has told me to do this. There's people who have opinions. I saw somebody on the, uh, I saw a comment the other day. It was like, oh, you the, uh, and it, it's, it's hurt because somebody was commenting on me. So like, you're in your Range Rover. And I'm like, I don't even own a Range Rover, right? <laughs> so it's like, you got to understand some people are not happy. Some people are not fulfilled with their own life and they spit their trauma out on you because they see you working towards something that they want to do, they don't have the courage to do it. So when you look at it like that, you stop taking it personal. I'm not trying to change opinions. I'm not trying to change the narrative about me because you know what? I have my own narrative about me. And that narrative is true. Those that love me have a narrative about me. Those, that's the narrative I'm concerned about. People who experience me and been around me enough. I'm concerned about that. 
And even if those people had a bad narrative about me, I'm not gonna allow it to change who I am. I refuse to live my whole life catering to people, people's opinions. I refuse to allow my life to be defined by that. And some of you have, are living your life doing exactly that. And it's preventing you from focusing on your gifts, your talents, and you being who you truly are. If you're not enough for somebody, then congratulations. They're not enough for you. They're not meant for you. You're not meant for everybody. Stop trying to be everything to everybody. And be everything to the somebody that needs you to be, which is yourself. Start there. And that's half of y'all's problem is that that's y'all ceiling. Oh, this person thinks this about me. This person said this about me. Who cares? Opinions can't stop you. Opinions have no dictation over how you live your life. Facts. Opinions have no, no power on how you show up every single day. Right? Let them do what they do. That's them. So I'm about to head home. I thought we had more time, but Tristan came back in. But I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Tight peace right now to get my new book, Protect Your Peace. That's going to help y'all right there. I'm, and I'm not trying to sell you the book. Like, I'm, it's the book. Like, if you're on here, you should get it because it's me. You know what I mean? Um, and it will help your life, especially if you're dealing with stuff like that. Like, Protect Your Peace. Um, just type peace or go to trendshelton.com. And uh, let's make this number one book in the world. And with you guys' help, I think we can definitely do that. Thank you guys for supporting. Uh, I'm going to keep showing up. And uh, I'm taking a little bit of rest this week. But I'm going to show up majorly, you know, starting after, definitely in 2024. And just my goal is to serve as much as I can. You know what I mean? I want to take away all excuses that you might have and be an example to say, man, you can actually go do it. And if you look at my life, if you look about, if you look at where I came from, some of y'all know, you know that this was built off of this, me going live, me sharing my life, me working on myself, me sharing my trials, my tribulations, me going through my dark moments and just sharing my life and working on myself. And what happens is this is the results of me working on myself. I asked myself that question today. Like, dang, Trent, what ceiling do you have in your life that you need to destroy? I say, you know what? This would be a great message to share with, share with the rehab family. So if it's possible for me, it's possible for you. And I'm not saying that because it's cute. <laughs> it's a cute saying, but it's true. You know what I mean? Like you got to just really say, this is the year where I focus on this. You know what I mean, you got a lifetime to accomplish things. When God calls you on me, calls you on me, you're going to be gone anyway. So then it don't matter. But you have a lifetime to say, you know what? Like, let me stop putting so much pressure on myself to change everything. But like, let me just change something that makes me feel good. And I would say this, like, I think one major change that you can have in your life is like change I call it my M's and I'm not going to go through all of that today, but like movement is one, right? Meditation is one. But when you can change how you feel about yourself and how you see yourself, like your energy, we talk about that and protect your peace, protect your energy. It's everything. You know what I mean? Like it's everything. This is to me the biggest thing that you need to change and needs to be renewed is your mind, right? How you think about yourself, how you see yourself, how you see the world. Like, I believe if you, if you really, really focus on those three things right there, like how you see yourself and how you see the world, that's what we call perspective. If you really, really get clear on that and really work towards that, right? Creating the energy that you need. I'm going to tell you to work out. I'm going to tell you to go for a walk. I'm going to tell you to meditate, pray. If you eat right, right? If you start treating yourself with love, like you say, this is the year where I love myself. And I'm going to have a live where I'm going to talk about my biggest struggles in 2023, things I did wrong. I'm going to share that with y'all. I'm going to be totally transparent probably here in a few days. Like, these are the three things I did wrong <laughs> this year that I want to change. But if you can say, you know what? I'm going to control the things. I'm going to be amazing at, at changing what I can control, right? Some of y'all are amazing at trying to change what you can't control, people's opinions and all that. But I'm going to be amazing at, at changing what I can't control and what I can control. I'm going to be amazing at that because I believe when you change what you can control, you change this. You change how you feel about yourself, how you see the world, how you deal with situations that come towards you and you have a different outlook on life. And I believe that is everything. It's not money. It's not fame. It's not celebrity. It's not those things because you can have all those things and have a weak outlook on life 
and you can see everything as, as working against you, you can not love your life and love yourself. That's why I say, man, like if you can start loving yourself more, if you can start valuing yourself more and you can start saying, you know, no matter my circumstances, no matter what's going on around me, I'm never going to allow that to change how I feel about myself and see myself. I might experience all the damn failure in the world this next year, but I'm not going to allow that to make me think I'm a failure at all. When you can have that, that filter system in your life that says experience, perspective, my life, experience is what happens. I put it through my filter system, then it spews out how I feel about myself. If you can have that down, and I'm gonna teach on this throughout 2024, it's gonna be my main message. And again, that's in the book, right? That's principle number seven, right? Um, shift your perspective. But if I can build this filter system, this perspective filter system that serves me, so no matter what happens in my experience of life, it's gonna go through my system of goodness, of power, and it's gonna empower my life. It's gonna power my life. It's gonna shift my mindset to, to see, to shift my vision to see these things are working for me then that's where life becomes beautiful. That's when you become dangerous in a good way because nothing can break you, nothing can shake you. That's what we call unshakable faith. So there you have it, y'all. I'm sorry.